We just released a major new version of Descript. The headline feature is called Underlord. It's an AI assistant that does a lot of your editing for you. But as part of this redesign, we snuck in by my account 28 quality of life improvements, not major new features, just little things to the design that make Descript more delightful to use. Just use them in the app and discover them one at a time or keep watching if you wanna watch me go through them at an incredibly fast pace. Number one. First thing you're gonna notice is that there's just a new coat of paint on Descript. Here's what Descript looked like before and here's what it looks like now. Number two, you'll notice that we've taken all of the insertion menus that used to be up here and moved them over into a single right sidebar. This makes everything easier to find and you can keep things like stock media libraries open without them obstructing your work. Number three, the properties that used to be over here on the right are now split between two tabs, scene and layer. So if you click on scene, you'll get scene level controls like selecting your layout or adding a transition. And then layer is where you get your layer properties. So like if you wanna add studio sound to your script layer. Number four, captions are now in their own sidebar. And when you click them, they apply to the whole composition by default. Number five, composition navigation is improved. You can quickly switch between compositions up here in the app bar. Or if you want compositions open all the time, they're always over here in the project sidebar. Number six, the canvas selection toolbar includes access to more properties. The idea here is that you don't need to have your layer properties tab open all the time in the sidebar because most of them are available in these selection toolbars. Along the same lines, we're adding a scene toolbar to the canvas in the coming weeks that will let you quickly swap layouts. Number seven, the recorder is now in the sidebar as well. Insert your recording into the script as a new layer or replace the selection just by clicking in the script. Number eight, the file preview experience is way better. Now when you click on a file, it shows in a big popover from which you can easily find the part of the file that you care about and drag it into your composition just like this. This should make it way easier to pull in short parts of really long files. Number nine, for layers that span multiple scenes, it's now easier to change the scope of your selection. So if you wanna change the color of your captions, for example, you can decide whether you want that change to apply just to the current scene or the entire layer across all scenes. Number 10, all of the AI actions that used to be kinda of hidden away in the search box are now laid out in the new Underlord sidebar. Number 11 is that the UI of these actions is way nicer. Instead of just getting this text field thing, you got a proper UI with buttons and stuff. Number 12, we've added our most popular AI effects to the Underlord sidebar for easier access and discovery. Okay, now let's talk about templates and layouts because we've made some pretty big changes here, starting with number 13, which is that once you've selected a template for a project, we now remember that on a per project basis. Number 14, when you're switching between layouts, they're now going to swap layers instead of always adding new ones. So now layouts are gonna feel much more like layouts in a slide deck. Number 15, for some of the old templates we had where you actually do wanna just add layers and stuff like annotations or overlays, we've moved those over to elements. Number 16, it's now easier to save new layouts to your templates. These layout improvements are nice, but honestly, we didn't quite get to everything that we wanted to do. So over the next month, you can expect even more improvements to layouts. Number 17, we've fully redesigned the timeline. Tons of little improvements in here, but you'll just find it cleaner and easier to use. Moving over to the script now for number 18, next time you create a new project or composition, you'll be greeted by this much friendlier empty state. Number 19, there's also a friendlier empty state on blank lines. You'll see that we're moving away from the behavior we used to have where you could just start typing to write AI speech. That ended up making it almost too easy. It wasn't what most people wanted to do most of the time. So now to add AI speech, you just click the AI speech button. Number 20, we've removed these buttons that used to be in the margin of the script. Don't feel like we need them anymore. Number 21, we've improved the design of scene boundaries, making them more obvious with this border around them. 22, we now automatically run speaker detection when you transcribe a file. This used to be something you had to run manually and you'd have to tell us how many speakers you thought there were in the file. Now that's all just automatic. Number 23, you can now change a speaker label just by selecting a range. This is great for when like speaker detection completely misses something that someone said. You can just select it, change the speaker label and you're good. Number 24, we've improved the workflow for merging speaker labels together, which you can see here. Number 25, there's a new selector for swapping between different editor layouts. 
Number 26, we've improved notifications for activities like file uploading, transcribing, effect processing. Number 27, marker navigation has been moved down here with the other transport controls. Finally, number 28 is that we've pulled out the home button from all of these other menu controls up here. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy all of these updates. Thank you.